Welcome to the Natural Medicine Cabinet class. What we're going to be talking about today is harmful over-the-counter uh, medications, right? The stuff you buy in Walgreens or, you know, the pharmacy. Um, and so the basic ones we're going to talk about are the NSAIDs, which are painkillers, right? Acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and aspirin. Um, acid blockers or PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, for heartburn, indigestion, so that's like the omeprazole, the Prilosec, that kind of stuff. And then antihistamines and cough syrups, for cold cough, flu, allergies, and antibiotics. I'll touch a little bit on antibiotics. Um, I won't go into great detail, or otherwise we'd be here all night, but I will touch a little bit on that. Okay, so what do all these things kind of have in common here, minus the antibiotics, that's kind of a different route is they all block pathways in the body, right? So instead of healing the root of the issue, they just block a pathway so that you don't get a symptom anymore, right? Many prescriptions do this too. So your body's supposed to have pain, right? The, the pain is the signal that something's wrong and it's alerting you to take note and figure out what's going on with you. So I put this picture up here. You've probably seen this guy at Quick Trip, maybe. I, I've seen many like him before. Um, but he's got a really crappy car. It's a little Kia. No offense, Sean. Sean, we still have a little <laughs> Kia. No offense to any Kia drivers. Um, they actually go, those cars go a long time. But he's got a little Kia, and he's got um, headphones on. And because this Kia is making so much noise, right? I've literally seen people with earmuffs on because their cars are so loud when they're driving them. This is what most Americans go through in their day with their body, right? Their bodies are crying out in pain and they're just gonna take um, an over-the-counter medication or a prescription to try to block that symptom rather than figuring out what's really causing the symptom. Okay, so we're gonna start with the NSAIDs. What do they do? They block the enzyme COX, C-O-X, which is used by the body to make your prostaglandins. Okay, so this is what they do. The prostaglandins are hormones that create inflammation. You want to have prostaglandins. You want to have them come out in your body because you need to have inflammation. Inflammation is the way your body works on disease or infection or a wound. So acute inflammation is how your body fights infection and speeds up the healing process. Inflammation, inflammatory hormones alert the immune system, increase blood flow, bring fluids to the area and cause pain. So a lot of people, inflammation is kind of a buzzword right now. And a lot of people are, oh, I've got inflammation all over my body. Well, yeah, you do, but let's figure out why. And chronic inflammation is not good. That means there's a big, deeper underlying symptom happening or issue happening. Um, but little acute um, phases of inflammation, like, right, you sprain your ankle and it swells up or, you know, you get a cough and your bronchial gets inflamed. Those are more acute. The use of NSAIDs can increase your risk of stomach ulcers, holes in the intestines. Think about leaky gut, another buzzword. Everybody's got leaky gut nowadays. Um, constipation, allergic reactions, nervous system disorders, heart attacks, strokes, and high blood pressure. So I had a gal in the other day and she was experiencing arthritic pain and really bad. And um, she said, well, my husband won't let me take Tylenol for it because he got a bleeding ulcer from taking Tylenol years ago. So I, it does happen, you guys. It, it can cause holes in your stomach, literally. So you wanna be really careful with these NSAIDs, not to mention they get into the liver and they, they leave um, metabolic debris in the liver. And so I have a homeopathic, um, uh, uh, homeopathy that I use called Medicord that actually detoxes out pharmaceutical residues in the body because they just kind of sit in there and stay in your liver or in your fat cells. So acid blockers um, or PPI proton pump inhibitors. Okay, so this is for your heartburn. Um, PPIs block your proton pumps. Every cell in your body has a proton pump. Okay, a proton pump is what your body uses to like move enzymes and for any kind of cellular respiration or process, right? Think about like how a pump works, okay? So every cell on your body has proton pumps. PPIs are turning the proton pumps off in your stomach, but also everywhere else in your body. So your stomach acid isn't a bad guy. You want to have stomach acid. You wanna have a good amount enough to digest your food. 
Um, it kills bacteria, pathogens, and breaks down your food, okay? So um, if you have low stomach acid, you're more prone to bacterial infections and pathogens like parasites and other things getting in. Some of the common um, bacterial stuff in your stomach is like H. pylori, if you guys have ever heard about that one. That um, lives in our stomach and when our stomach acid gets low, it can proliferate and get out of control and that can cause stomach ulcers as well. And that's actually pretty common. Um, hypochlorhydria is rare. So hypo, hyperchlorhydria is when you have too much stomach acid. It's actually very rare and it's seen um, with Zollinger Ellison syndrome where tumors in the pancreas cause overproduction of gastrin. Okay, so I ask people when they say, oh, my doctor put me on a meprazole for my heartburn. They just say, take another Prilosec, take two, take three if it won't go away, right? And so I ask them, I'm like, well, did your doctor um, do an endoscope on you and see how much stomach acid is in your stomach? Because that's really rare for that um, to be too much stomach acid. And they all go, no. And I go, well, how do you know you have too much then? And they're like, well, because I get the heartburn. And I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about that, right? So your stomach is like a bowl and your stomach acid should be sitting in there nice like a swimming pool, right? Everything that you eat should sink below the level of the stomach acid. If it starts piling up and it gets too high and it's not getting broke down by the stomach acid, what happens is it starts fermenting and bubbling up, okay? So in your stomach, you have two valves or sphincters. Um, you have this lower one that's called the pyloric sphincter and you have this upper one that's called the LES valve, the lower esophageal valve. The pyloric sphincter doesn't open unless your, your chyme in your stomach, which is your chewed up food, is a certain pH, okay? It has to be a low pH for it to open, meaning all the acid has touched the food and everything's broken down. If it doesn't reach that pH, it won't open and you won't digest your food down into your duodenum. What happens is the food will start to ferment up and bubble. Think about putting your meal in a blender and sitting it out in a 98 degree day. What happens? After four hours, it's gonna be rancid, nasty, fermented, right? That's what happens in your stomach. Well, this LES valve, it kind of flaps in the wind. It's supposed to easily let food down as you swallow. So if you eat too much food and you don't have enough stomach acid, you get this fermented, bloated gob of food in your gut and it starts bubbling up. Stomach acid is very powerful. If I dropped a little drop on a carpet, it would chew right through the carpet. So if you get a a microscopic amount of stomach acid on a little piece of food and it comes up into your esophagus, it's gonna burn like a mother, okay? So it's not like your stomach acid is just coming up. You would die instantly if that happened. It's a tiny, tiny amount that's getting up in there. So a lot of times it's not enough stomach acid. These PPIs can increase your risk of a B12 deficiency anemia, kidney damage, cardiovascular disease, stroke, C. diff, which is another um, bacteria that lives in the gut, H. pylori, and death. Just death. <laughs> you can read it right on there. Just, just death. death. You can just die. Okay, so this is a big one. I try to get everybody off. And it used to be that it wasn't over the counter or Meprazole wasn't. It is now. You can buy it anywhere. It's over the counter. You can just go get your Prilosec and take five a day like the doctor ordered. PPIs are approved by the FDA for short-term use only, not long-term. Now everybody's just out there. Oh, okay. Humans are resilient, you guys. We are very resilient. So antihistamines, they block histamine pathways. Histamine is released by white blood cells when the body detects something harmful such as an infection. It causes blood vessels to expand and skin to swell, which protects the body. So it's part of the inflammatory process in the body. You need histamine. You don't want to block your immune system from working. You really do not want to do that. <laughs> it's a big thing. And that's what this does. This blocks um, the body from producing histamine. And that's just, you just don't want to do that. So, um, Antihistamines can increase your risk of dry eyes, dry mouth, blurred or doubled vision, dizziness, headaches, low blood pressure, mucus buildup, sinus infections. A lot of people around here on antihistamines that suffer from sinus infections. Rapid heart rate, difficulty urinating, and constipation. We're going to talk a lot about constipation tonight. So cold and cough. 3.1 million people misuse cough and cold medications. 
It works by decreasing activity in the brain that causes coughing. Who wants to take a drug like that? Increases your risk for seizures, comas, changes in breathing, hallucinations, unsteadiness, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, dizziness, weakened bones, constipation, and agitation. This is a big one because a lot of people are hooked on this DXM. A lot of young people get hooked on it. Um, we're looking at like the DayQuil and the NyQuil, right? And they just take it because they got to sleep or they aren't feeling well and then they get hooked on it and um, it's very addictive. So, and it causes all of these things. I, I had this when I took um, NyQuil one time, I took it one time and I was a kid, I was like 11, 12 maybe, staying the night at my grandma's house and I couldn't sleep so I took NyQuil. I think I had a cough or something, head cold and I didn't wake up till like two o'clock the next day. I mean, it was a long time. And then I went in to take a shower and had passed out on the floor uh, for two hours on the bathroom floor, not even knowing what had happened. My grandma um, didn't even know I had woke up. She came in and found me, but um, yeah, it was, a, it was a thing, it was a deal. So I, I knew like I'm never doing that again. Okay, so what we're all about tonight is getting to the root problem. Because as you can see, there's some dangerous stuff just lurking in the drugstore. And most of you here tonight know, um, especially if you're my client, you know what to do. You're here to learn how to take care of your family members, your neighbors, your friends, the people that you're with, right? So I'm educating you so that you can take this back and say, this is why you don't do that. Do this instead. Okay, so you're going to be little mini me's. I'm creating mini me's out there. Okay, so we're going to talk about the common ailments that people go to the drugstore for um, and the root causes of those ailments. What's really the problem? So headaches, constipation, heartburn, allergies and hives cold, flus, coughs, congestion, infections, and then wounds and burns. So before we talk about anything, we gotta talk about the root of most people's problem, which is dehydration. This um, doctor here, anybody wanna take a shot at his name? <laughs> <laughs> so it's chronic water shortage in the body that causes the most disease of the human body. And it is true, you guys, it is so true. Um, so this is the book he wrote, if anybody's interested in it. Yep, your body's many cries for water. I. I tell everyone to read that book because you learn so much and you get to see the signs in your kids and your family. Um, so this woman here, she was uh, having terrible migraine headaches. This is my hydration lecture, by the way. Uh, she was having terrible migraine headaches and she went to see a neurologist and the neurologist said, well, how much water are you drinking? And she said, well, I have drink a couple cups of water and a couple cups of coffee. And so the neurologist said, well, I'm not going to work with you until you start drinking more water. So she started drinking a gallon of water a day. Four weeks later, that was what she looked like. I mean, she took 10 years off of her life or her age, right? Um, she lost 10 pounds, didn't change anything about her diet. And her migraines went away in the first day and didn't come back. The reason she um, lost 10 pounds is because she was retaining water. So she was holding on to it, right? So you can go a long time without food but you can't go very long without water, only a few days. So what your body, you have this built-in defense mechanism that your body will just hold on to any water that it gets, right? Your blood has to stay a certain fluidity. Um, you have to have enough water for your brain to work. So your body will hold on to it or retain it. So when you start becoming hydrated again, what happens is you gotta pee a lot, right? When you start drinking water, well, you could potentially be peeing out 10 pounds of water because your body says, okay, we're getting water now. We can let go of some of this old water. And the best way to get it off is urinating it. So 10 pounds she lost of water weight because she was so dehydrated. These are the hydration takeaways. 60% of your body is made of water. So you require a lot to cleanse yourself and turn over those new cells, right? Like most of us think food, oh, I'm gonna eat because I'm food, fuels me, but also builds my body, right? But water is a huge part of building your body. So 60% of your body is water. You can only live three days without water. Um, dehydration equals rapid aging. You saw in the picture. I see it in people all the time. They come in and they're like, well, you told me to drink more water and I just feel my skin. I mean, their skin is better. Their eyes are more clear. Like, and they're like, people are telling me I look younger just from drinking the water. You were right. Get a Berkey and Spectrumin. Spectrumin, right here, my favorite little drops. So 
I went to the Cellcor class not that long ago, and I posted, talked about the radium that's around Wisconsin in the water supply, right? And so I started doing some research and got on the DNR website and looked around. And what I found was that we're not in too much of an area that's concerning around here. Um, so I haven't dug any deeper. I probably need to go see more authorities on that. Um, but I haven't dug deeper. But what I use for my city water here, because we just get it out of the tap here, is a Berkey water filter. It's the best water filter on the market. Um, it's the only one that will take out Roundup. And Roundup is what they spray on all the cornfields around here, and it's highly toxic to us. So this is the only one that will get Roundup at. You pour your regular water into it. You pour your filter. tap water, and it filters it. And then what happens is it filters it, and then you got to add some minerals back in it, right? Because water is like a magnet to minerals. So if you don't add minerals back into your water, what happens is that just absorb, your water will just absorb all the minerals in your body. So if you add the minerals back in, your body can absorb the water easier, right? What are we supposed to drink? Like spring water, right? Out of the spring. Spring water has all the minerals in it still. It's very natural. And I'm, I can tell you that it improves people's bowel movements too. And here's why it does. Because your body absorbs the water better. So when you're absorbing the water better, everything's working better, okay? So this is what I do. I use this every single day. I could not live without my Spectrum and Drops. Drink at least 80 to 90 ounces of water a day. That's the goal for everyone. So it's typically half your body weight in ounces a day. Plus, if you're drinking coffee, let's say you drink 10 ounces of coffee a day, you wanna add 10 ounces of water on top of half your body weight. But that gets really confusing to tell people and they kinda of are like, wait a minute, doing the math in their head. So I basically tell them, right around 80 to 90 ounces is a really good measure to get. Limit coffee to eight ounces daily. It's a diuretic, it does dehydrate you. So headaches, pain, and inflammation. We learned what to go to first, right? Water. Um, someone said the other day, their aunt or their great aunt or their great grandma or somebody would always say, they'd like be out playing and cut themselves or get a bee sting. She'd go, drink water. Like water is the cure all for everything, right? But it really is. If you're dehydrated, you're gonna have a lot of problems. So I tell everyone first, drink water. Then let's go um, to something else if that doesn't work. So um, headaches, pain, and inflammation. So dehydration can cause that. Constipation can cause that. Toxicity, blood quality issues, candida, which is a yeast infection, hormones, um, and gallbladder and liver issues can all cause headaches, pain, and inflammation. Heartburn and indigestion. This book is really good too. This was one of our required reading materials in the Nutritional Therapy Association. Um, why stomach acid is good for you. Like we talked about why it's good for you. That book explains it in far greater detail with studies and everything to go with it. Um, so what causes heartburn and indigestion? Low stomach acid, we talked about that. Not enough bile. So if your gallbladder isn't producing enough bile, you're, like I said, that lower sphincter, that pyloric sphincter won't open because your food isn't broken down enough yet. So it just sits in there and you get that indigestion. Plus um, bile helps break down, it neutralizes the stomach acid too. It helps break down um, fats. Not enough enzymes. Enzymes break your proteins down, right? So you need the hydrochloric acid, the enzymes and the bile all of them together to make beautiful digestive juices that can help you digest. Heartburn and indigestion can be caused by constipation, okay? So your body, if you're constipated, your body's not gonna be super awesome about you putting more food in, right? If you're not moving the stuff through that you should have moved through, it's not gonna, you, everything's backed up, right? So it's just it's as simple as that, right? It's just like a machine would be. You gotta unclog yourself and then you'll digest easier. Bacterial infections can cause that. So H. pylori, like we talked about, can cause um, heartburn and indigestion. And parasites can too. Constipation, this is a big one. So much of my practice revolves around helping people to poop. And it's awesome because when you do, when you go regularly, I mean, it's life-changing for some people. There's some people that go like once a week or once every 10 or 14 days, right? So what causes constipation? Well, low fiber diet. And a lot of people think, well, I eat a salad every day, right? Well, greens don't necessarily have that much fiber in them. So you gotta look and see. People think that because it's plant matter, it has a lot of fiber, but that's not the case. 
Yes, they do have fiber, but there's other things that are higher in fiber. Dehydration can cause constipation. That's another big one, especially with kids, because kids do not do well at drinking water mostly. Um, an unhealthy microbiome. So if your microbiome's out of balance and you don't have the right um, bacteria in there, because your bacteria break your food down for you, right? So you gotta have that good bacteria. Just think of like a compost pile and all the bacteria on the compost pile. And if you have good bacteria in the compost pile, it breaks everything down really quickly. That should be in your stomach too. And then um, low bile production. So bile um, stimulates the colon and the small intestine to work. Allergies and hives. So what can cause allergies and hives? So high histamine diet. Um, there are some natural occurring histamine in foods like avocado, citrus, strawberries can have natural occurring histamine. And then there's histamine from bacteria. So bacteria cause histamine. So if you have candida, you're going to have high histamine in your body because candida produces histamine. All bacteria produces histamine as like their, their gas or whatever. I don't know the technical term for it. Anyways, um, their metabolite. So, uh, Histamine, you can get naturally occurring in some foods, like I just said, but also anything fermented. So sauerkraut, yogurt, kefir, kombucha, um, processed um, meats, anything that's been sitting in the fridge for leftovers that can grow bacteria on it. So anything with bacteria will produce histamine. And if you're eating a lot of histamine foods, like a lot of people go, oh, I get these itchy shins and they just itch and itch and itch. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, what have, what have you been eating a lot of? Chocolate's another one. Chocolate's high in histamine. Wine, beer, right? So we get these ladies that like their evening glass of wine and the chocolate, you know, and then they end up with really high histamine levels. And they're eating their yogurt every morning and their smoothie, right? And they're getting high histamine. So that can cause that um, unhealthy microbiome like we just talked about. If you have too much bacteria, that can um, cause histamine and low stomach acid. Colds, flus, fevers, coughs, congestion. Viruses are not alive, they're really just dead protein. Okay, so when they test for stuff, they're testing for other people's dead protein. When they tested for COVID, they tested for some guy's pro dead protein in his body, and that's how they labeled it COVID. That's what viruses are. They're dead protein in the body. They're not alive. When you have a lot of dead protein in your body, you're toxic basically is what it comes down to. Your body isn't getting rid of that um, dead protein like it should, um, and it's causing a lot of toxins, oxidative stress, and then it builds up, and then your body goes on alert and inflames everything, right? And says, this is the area we need to work on. This is what we need to do. What can cause that? Low vitamins. Vitamins are antioxidants. All vitamins are antioxidants, except vitamin D, that's a hormone. Um, but antioxidants, this is my little story about antioxidants, which are so important. Antioxidants help your immune system because your white blood cells eat dead and dying tissue. Free radicals are like little, think of like, like little um, pinballs with spikes all over them, bumping into your cells and tissues and causing a lot of dead protein, a lot of um, damaged cellular um, debris and your white blood cells come and eat all that up. So if you have a lot of oxidative stress, what happens is your white blood cells get busy cleaning up all the white, the distress from the, that the free radicals leave behind and they're busy doing that and they can't help you do other things. So then you're more prone to like parasite infections, bacterial infections, low immune system, okay? So low vitamins, you want those antioxidants. And if anyone has like lower liver function, which almost everyone does these days through epigenetics, you guys know what epigenetics is? It's how your environment affects your genes, right? So your environment affects your genes. I'm gonna do a class on it because it will blow your mind. I have so much to teach you guys. Um, I used to teach these, these epigenetic classes to chiropractors and doctors when I was teaching but epigenetics is amazing. Your environment alters your genes and then your altered genes get passed to the next generation. And then pretty soon you see the society of weakened people, what we're seeing right now, because the genes get altered and then they're not as strong. And then with every generation, they get weakened and weakened. That's epigenetics. And it's all the toxins in our environment and our food supply, 88,000 toxins in our food supply, right? And we're just damaging our genes 
And as we go, everybody gets weaker and weaker. And now what do we have? People can't get pregnant. Well, why not? Is that mother nature telling us that we're not fit to be pregnant? So low vitamins are really important to keep your vitamin intake high. Low minerals. Minerals act as buffers to acids. Toxins are acids in your body. So you need a lot of minerals to buffer those toxins so they're not as harmful to you. Um, too many toxins such as sugar, dairy, soda, environmental toxins, medications, and EMFs, electromagnetic fields that come off of cell phone towers and our cell phones, our computers, right? The electricity in our home, the Wi-Fi, um, dehydration, of course, there it is again, and constipation. These can all lead to toxic body. These can all lead to um, more oxidative stress and then a weakened immune. And then infection, so this is where the antibiotics um, come into play. So antibiotics kill bacteria, everyone knows that, right? So infections um, can be caused by a microbiome imbalance, right? Because that's the lower, lowered immunity again. Your immune system is in your gut, okay? So the microbiome imbalance, um, eating foods with um, bacteria on them can cause, a lot of people have chronic um, foodborne illness. They have food poisoning and they don't even know it. It shows up all the time when I test people. The cataplex AC is the thing I use for it, but um, it will flare into appendic appendicitis. It will flare the appendix up. And you can have it for months and not even know, but you ate something bad and guess who's in there? That bacteria, that bad guy bacteria, just like woohoo, party and having a good time. And you don't even know and you're just over you know weeks you're just slowly getting sicker and sicker not feeling well and then all of a sudden oh you got side pain i think it's my appendix i don't know what to do and you know you it could have fixed it with just some simple cataplex ac so um infections yes you do need antibiotics antibiotics are um, important they do save lives i'm not against western medicine by any means i just know that they don't heal people they save lives, <laughs> right? Great at saving lives, not great at healing the root cause. Um, so antibiotics are needed necessary and at any point in my practice, I think someone needs to go in and get on them because what I have isn't strong enough or whatever. I do refer them to do that, but we try not to. Okay, wounds and burns. <laughs> I know this one. This is me really, because I do, I have an issue with being clumsy. Wounds and burns just happen when you're not paying attention, right? You have an accident and you get hurt and or burn. Look at that gal. I didn't even know. Did you know they had those, Tori? I, did, I wish really? they would have had them yeah. when I was in high school because I, that was the worst burn you could ever get was that or on the inside of your forearm. How did you do that? Yeah, or right there. Yeah, yeah. those bangs. The forehead, what is it? Yeah. Like? yeah. Um, so I thought that was funny and burns hurt. They are not fun. What are we going to do about those things? Right? Um, you're going to take supplements that come from nature. You're going to use natural stuff to help your body heal at the root. We're going to talk about the supplements now and what I use them for. Okay. So this is moving on. So we've covered all of the things that can go wrong and things that are causing those problems. And now we're going to talk about how the supplements can help and which ones. This is everybody's favorite part. So beta plus, beta plus is bile salts. We talk about bile. Um, bile salts are, the salts are the component of the bile. Um, but what your gallbladder stores the bile for the liver, liver makes the bile. That's a whole different class too. We'd be here all night. Um, but um, bile is really important. So I use this um, for constipation. You can use it for indigestion, bloating, gas, foodborne illness. Um, and a pro tip, bile salts are natural steroids. So use with inflammation such as joint pain or back pain. A lot of um, functional medicine doctors will give people high doses of enzymes and bile salts to help them with inflammation in their body, arthritic and other inflammation. If you don't have a gallbladder, anyone that doesn't have a gallbladder needs to be taking bile salts. And they don't tell you that when they take your gallbladder out. But it is very important because you're not producing the bile, you're not um, getting the bile that you should get from your gallbladder to digest your food. Your liver isn't, 
your liver has to store the, gall, the bile now. So it doesn't make as much. So you're not getting as much bile. So yes, you should have bile salts if you don't have a gallbladder. Inflamatone, this is probably one of our top selling um, supplements. It's not really a supplement, it's homeopathy. It's designed to remind the body to work on inflammation. Works for fevers, chills, swelling, redness, swollen glands, headaches, coughs, um, uncomfortable urination, pain, stiff joints, and a pro tip, take it when you fly to help with the radiation and the pressure changes on the plane. Works really good for that. I, uh, Inflamatone is always in my purse. If it's not, it's because somebody hijacked it, right? <laughs> but I love Inflamatone. It, I, t I tell all my clients to get on Inflamatone. Histoplex. So this is a blend of herbs that have immunomodulating properties. It's good for hives, allergies, headaches, stomach flu, and fevers. So histoplex is a big one. It's, it's, um, an, it's a natural antihistamine. I don't know how it works because I've read the ingredients and I'm like, how does that do that? I can't figure it out. And I know the owners of Biotics, the company, they're two brothers. They're, um, they're the DeLuca brothers, Dennis and Daryl DeLuca. And they're great guys. They live down in Texas, been to their warehouse, um, been to dinner with them several times, taught for them. Anyways, I always forget to ask them, what is it about Histoplex that makes it work? It's the combination of herbs. It acts as a natural antihistamine. They have functional medicine doctors design these herbs. So they work, and I know they do. But um, pro tip, take three before bed with a large glass of water to minimize a hangover. So Sean had, when he was at the fraternity house, he was muscle testing people. He was calling me, mom, I need more supplements. I'm like, I'm not paying for your beer drinking fraternity friends to get on supplements because they'd get sinus infections and strep throat and whatever because they're sick. They're weakened immunity. They're drinking, staying up late, right? But he got everybody hooked on Histoplex after he learned about the little secret, which is it's an antihistamine. A lot of times, you know, beer, wine, alcohol will cause high histamine levels. I'm not kidding you. If you take it before you drink, you will not have a hangover. You will, have, you will feel nothing. You will feel yeah, brand new. All-purpose comfrey salve. This, I love this salve. Um, it's olive oil infused with comfrey, candula, St. John's wort, plantain, and beeswax. Actually, my sister-in-law, Alex, and I made our own plantain salve last year. A little bit. Springtime last year, we made some um, in it. I finished mine. We scooped it all out, actually. Sean used a bunch on his sunburn and when we went to Florida. Um, but the plantain is awesome for healing the skin and, and any kind of burns and wounds. Heals chapped skin. It's good for aches and pains, cuts, burns, scrapes. It's basically like a natural neosporin. Um, a pro tip, you can add frankincense or lavender to the salve to heal injuries and um, or add tea tree oil for infected wounds or fungal stuff. So um, frankincense is an amazing skin healer. Frankincense is just amazing all over in general. I love frankincense. Yep. We sell tablet form, which is called Boswellia, that's really awesome for anti-inflammatory. But yes, frankincense is bomb.com for anything skin related. And if you mix it with the salve, it's, it clears up almost instantly. Lavender is very calming to the skin, so it can be like a natural pain reliever. And the tea tree is for um, fungal or... Um, anything looking like infected. So Migranex, this is the, the migraine. So this would be instead of your Excedrin, right? Um, blend of vitamins, herbs, riboflavin, CoQ Zyme, uh, Feverfew, and Butter Bar. It's good for migraines, headaches, and eye strain. So we had a client come in and um, she didn't have an appointment with me. She was just coming here to do, I can't remember, an interview or whatever. Anyways, she came in. She, I wasn't here yet. She saw Sean. She's like, I have a spleen migraine headache. What do you got? And Sean throws migraine X at her. She takes one and then I get here and we do the little, it was like a Facebook live video or something. We do that. And then we're done. She's like, I'm, she's like this migraine X, this is a miracle. Like she took two of them or one or something. And within 20 minutes, it was completely gone. And, and I said, I know, and I wouldn't believe you if I didn't know that it was, didn't happen to everyone else that takes it too. I mean, literally everyone that takes migraine X gets relief. I've never heard of one person take it and say, oh, I didn't get relief. It's incredible. I stand by that. Um, so that would be instead of Excedrin.
And you can take it for just headaches too. It doesn't have to be for migraines as well. And you can take it as needed. Somebody had a really good question at the last class. Well, do I take it all the time? Because on the bottle it says take one daily or whatever. But no, you can just take it as you need it. Um, hydrozyme. So hydrozyme is another one that hangs out in the bottom of my purse at all times. If I think I'm going to eat something a little iffy, because I'm a little suspicious of most um, food when you go out to eat. Uh, so I worked in a restaurant at one time, so I know how they let stuff go, right? So um, I'll take a hydrozyme before I eat, and then I know I've got plenty of stomach acid. It's killing everything. I'm not getting anything. Or if I eat sushi or raw fish, I'll take hydrozyme. Um, it's a mix of hydrochloride, enzymes, and betaine. Another one I have is called Kaleamo, and it has um, chloride in it and, and calcium and magnesium. So here's a little tip about chloride. If you overheat in the summer, it's usually because you don't have enough chloride. Chloride is the mineral that cools your body down. So I, right around this time of year, everybody starts testing for Kaleamo again because their bodies are requiring a lot of chloride to cool themselves down. It takes a lot for our bodies to adjust from really cold to really warm, right? So 30 degree days to 70. We just had, what, almost a 70 degree day the other day? And our bodies, how many people got like hot, a little overheated at one point? Because our bodies are like not used to um, cooling ourselves down yet. So it just happens, that regulation happens too quickly. So the chloride is what I use to get people to um, cool down in the summer. Because chloride's that mineral, helps you cool down. But this also has enzymes and betaine. Um, I use it for heartburn, indigestion, constipation, foodborne illness, seasonal allergies. Pro tip, take one before eating undercooked meat or sushi. So if you're out eating a steak, you like it raw, rare. Yeah. Um, okay, or your husband likes it rare, right? Give him one. Um, okay, so then oregobiotic. So this is my new ADP for those of you that are familiar with ADP. It's an oregano tablet and they sell oregano over the counter. You can buy, you know, at the health food store, oregano capsules. Um, what you want to get is something that is slow releasing, excuse me, slow releasing. So ADP is made in a tablet and it's designed to make its way through the entirety of your colon. So you'll poop out half of a tablet. I always tell people, don't be surprised when you poop out half a tablet. It's supposed to do that. Okay. So regobiotic, ADP is on back order and has been, and I can't live without it because it is what I use for a natural antibiotic in my practice. And so I always keep about 40 plus bottles on stock because I need it for bladder infections, sinus infections, ear infections, right? When people get any kind of bacterial thing and they don't want to go to their doctor on antibiotics and they don't have a fever, or there's nothing major going on, we get them on ADP. Well, it went on back order with a lot of the other products. So I found this little guy, which is Oregobiotic, and told, called Sean, said, get an account, we gotta get this in. I gotta test it. So we ordered like five bottles, I tested it one day, and I'm like, order 50. <laughs> so we have a bunch. Um, but it took the place of ADP, and it's got some other herbs in there too. So it's a blend of antibacterial herbs, emulsified for slow release, good for yeast infection, sinus, strep throat, bladder infections, dental abscess, nail fungus, foodborne illness. Um, Pro tip, so break a capsule open and apply to infected tooth, um, or you can break a capsule, dissolve it, and gargle with it, make a rinse um, for strep throat. Um, my kids never got on antibiotics when they had strep. I don't, they um, got tested a few times and then they'd write the prescription. I'm like, I'm not doing that. So I just give them ADP, but you gotta watch strep throat because you can die from that, right? So any bacterial thing, you gotta be careful and know when I gotta go. You start getting fevers, you start getting bad, then you gotta go to the hospital. But if you think you can do it on your own, try. I've, had, I've healed a lot of people from getting their teeth pulled out. So they'll call me and they're like, oh, my dentist can't get me in for a week and I've got this pain and it's abscess and they're gonna pull it. What do I do? So I get them on ADP or this oregobiotic and we just get that oregano oil, have them put some clove oil on and within two days their pain's gone and they're canceling their dentist appointment. FC Seidel. Okay, so this one is actually on back order. Um, it went on back order by our last class. We sold out of this one. So I switched to the Core Hydrangea instead. So this one's like um, 
a natural like Sudafed. It dries you up. It's a blend of Ayurvedic herbs that fights mold, yeast, and fungus. So in Ayurvedic medicine, if you have a lot of like yeast or mold or fungus in your body, you get a very damp internal environment. So you create a lot of congestion and mucus and discharge. Okay, so that's usually the case with that. But this has dry nerves. It's got some polydiarco and other herbs in it that help dry that up, um, which helps your immune system. So it's good for sinus congestion, phlegm, sugar cravings, acne. A lot of times acne is like yeast type stuff too. Um, pro tip, you can take it for SIBO, so small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, so, or use core hydrangea instead. So I said that at the last class because we still had some FCCidal and then we sold out of it and I was afraid that was going to happen. Core hydrangea probably would have been my top pick, but it's a liquid and people don't like doing liquid herbs. Most people want to take a capsule, so I su suggested FCCidal. But core hydrangea works just as good, if not better, than FCCidal. So I just didn't choose it because people complain about it. It doesn't taste that bad. You put it in water and drink it down, right? It's not that bad and it works really well. It dries you right up. So drainage tone, another one of the fan favorites, drainage tone, it works so well. This helps open um, and support the body's drainage pathways. Um, so it's good for swollen glands, sinus congestion, head congestion, mucus secretions, skin eruptions, and pro tip, you can use it for asthma. Colon plus caps. So these are my fiber caps that I use. Um, they're a blend of psyllium, apple pectin, prune, probiotic, aloe, and a bunch of other really good stuff. They work really well. They're pretty gentle. Um, I took two on accident one day when I, some days at the end of my day, I have a lot of capsules still laying around because I test people all day and I don't put my stuff back. And so what I do is I'm just like, okay, take those and I'll just take them. And there must have been a couple Colon Plus caps in there because within an hour I was like, oh, I got to go. And I don't need that because I eat a lot of fiber. I'm a really, I have a bowel movement two to three times a day. I don't need them, but they work really well. You can take up to 12 of them a day. They're pretty gentle. Um, and I use them for constipation, people with constipation. Start slow and work your way up. Because some people, they're like, oh, that was magic. I only need two and I am good. And some people are like, they have to do 12. Okay, so you just got to learn your body and figure out what works for you. And splitting them up in the day really helps too, right? Like you would food. You don't want to just get them all at once, 12 of them, and pop them down. You want to do like four in the morning, drink a glass of water. Four sometime in the afternoon, drink a glass of water. Four in the evening, drink a glass of water. These are for really constipated people. And then you should wake up in the morning and have a good bowel movement after that day of taking them. Bronk effect. So this one, I did the, we have the capsules, you guys, because most people don't like the liquid either, but I did the liquid on here because it's, I want you to think of it like cough syrup. Okay, so that's why I put the liquid on there, but the capsules are what everyone prefers. Bronk effect is another one of my top selling supplements because it works like no other. I mean, you really, you just need like a week of it and you're like, oh, I'm good. Whatever I had clears it up. So it's an herbal blend of licorice, pleurisy root, echinacea, ginger thyme, and more. Um, it's good for coughs, upper respiratory, dry throat, hoarseness, um, and pro tip, use it for night sweats. So a lot of times um, when you're having issues with lungs, you'll get night sweats. So I had a gentleman, his wife came, daughter came, family came, and he had terrible night sweats for like 15 years. Every night it would wake him up. Horrible night sweats. So he comes into me and I test him. I always think it's funny because I'll look at something and I'm like, oh, well, that's that. And it's almost like they know. And I don't diagnose them, but I just say, oh, well, that's probably that. And they're like, that's what it is. And I've spent 15 years at the doctors and all these specialists and you just didn't found it in one. And I'm like, well, you haven't taken the supplement yet. So let's wait and see if that's really what it is. Um, but he did that to me. I said, oh yeah, when night sweats can be lung issues. And he was like, it's like he knew. Even though he didn't really have a lot of lung distress, it's like he knew. And so he says, okay, so he goes home, get him on Bronk Effect. And I think maybe it was pneumotrophin too, those two things. And within two nights, they were gone and they haven't come back. 
he took the whole bottles of them, but yeah, two nights and his night sweats for 15 years, he would drench the sheets. It would wake him up at night. He was his lungs. So if you have anyone that are having night sweats, you know, of course hormones can cause night sweats too, but it can also be a lung issue. Okay, those are my supplements. Before we talk about this, I want to also talk about my little immune table over here. So on the first night, I had a client say, please, can you do, because she saw the preview kit, and she's like, can you do something for immune? Because I don't need the, the gastric stuff. I don't need the fiber caps. I don't need all that stuff. I want something for immune. And I said, okay. So I put together my favorite immune stuff over here. Um, drainage tones on there, inflammatone, core sambucus blend. This is a really good one. It's got echinacea and elderberry in it. It's got eye bright. It's a, just a combo. And you just put some in water, like preventatively, if you know you're going to be around sick people or you just aren't feeling well, you're feeling run down. This is a major antioxidant. Has anyone ever tasted echinacea? Horrible. I may have made you taste it, Ashley, at some point or somebody. It tastes horrible. So it will make your mouth numb. You feel like you're having an allergic reaction. It, have you ever licked a, the end of the battery? You know, like, right? That's what echinacea tastes like. Echinacea stimulates the immune system with that, like that, the way it tastes, it stimulates the immune system. So, um, and elderberry is just a major antioxidant. So this is a really good one just to help boost your immune system, clean you out, good for um, oxidative stress. You can give it to kids, it's great. You just put a little tiny bit in some grape juice and they drink it down, preventative. This is a really good one. Cataplex A, C, and E, these are the two big guns. So these are the guys that really help support immune function. This is whole food vitamin A, C, and E. E is really good for like low testosterone stuff too, um, especially for like us women when we need just a hint of testosterone because sometimes we do, we get a little low testosterone and that causes a lot of imbalances in our hormones. Cataplexy is great for that. Um, Cataplex AC, this is the one I use for like appendicitis stuff. So when people start getting that appendix pain, but it hasn't blown up or went into an infection, Cataplex AC for sure. Um, I use it for kids for blood quality, for kids that have bloody noses, works like a charm. They don't take the cataplex AC, their bloody noses come back. They take the cataplex AC, their bloody noses go away. It's great for blood quality. So these two guys are really good for immune. Um, and then echin this is echinacea plus vitamin C. So vitamin C helps echinacea to work. I don't exactly know the chemistry behind it. I should by now, but I don't. But I just have read the studies and the, it works. So echinacea helps vitamin C get into the cell. So this is echinacea with C in it. And then the oregobiotic, um, this is the one we just talked about. So that would be another immune system one in case for in, any kind of infectious type stuff. And then the herbal throat spray tone with um, liquid iodine. So if I'm traveling or I feel like I'm coming down with something, I will do, what you do is you put iodine into this liquid throat spray and you just shake it up. And the iodine kills whatever's in the back of your throat. And then the herbs help do that as well. This actually tastes really good too, this herbal throat spray. It's very potent, but it tastes really good. Of course, vitamin D, um, we have d different kinds of vitamin D. This is our most popular D3K2 lipo spray. It goes right under the tongue. Um, everyone should be taking vitamin D in the winter. Every single person, well, maybe not on the planet, because if you live in beautiful, warm, sunny weather, you don't have to, but in the North, Midwest, should be taking vitamin D. It is so important, you guys. Vitamin D is so important. I kind of threw this together last minute, so I don't think there was anything else. Oh, Viracord and Flutone. How could I forget about them? So these are homeopathics for um, virus and flu. They're really good for kids. Um, and you just take them, like if they start feeling like they're coming down with something, just give them Flutone and Viracord. It'll draw it out in the body and it'll cut the time in like half of how they're, how sick they are. Works really good. So Viracord and Flutone, both of those too.